We've talked about the jet stream a lot before, and it's that faster ribbon of winds moving well above our heads where planes fly 30 to 35,000 feet up, and that really directs where storm systems move across the world. Now, what happens with the jet stream as it meanders across the globe is it dips into troughs and rises into ridges, and this forms all of the storminess that we see. So we're going to be talking about these troughs and ridges today and how that creates spin in the atmosphere. So as we look at a weather map across the United States, imagine that this is our jet stream, this red line. Into the trough, and as the uh, area of low pressure forms at the base of that trough, it will intensify as it moves up towards the right side of the trough. So uh, storm systems like to form in these troughs, these dips in the jet stream, and then intensify as they move farther to the north and east, whereas we have generally calmer weather in the ridges of our jet stream. So all of these dips in the jet stream form spin. That's our uh, big word today is vorticity. And breaking it down, vortex, you can think of that as a spin in the atmosphere. Vorticity just basically means a measure of spin or rotation in the lower levels of the atmosphere. And keep in mind that areas of low pressure, storm systems, rotate counterclockwise. And that allows for uplift in the atmosphere. But the faster these storms rotate, the more that there's vertical motion in the atmosphere. And we talked about last week on Morse code of weather that there's more vertical motion that there is, the more uh, precipitation that can form because we're getting more water vapor to condense and cool in the upper levels of the atmosphere. So it's kind of like the figure skater effect where you bring your arms in and you rotate a lot faster. So the faster rotation, the bigger that our vorticity values are, that means that there's a lot more vertical motion in the atmosphere, more storminess, and usually more precipitation. So how do we create spin or vorticity in the atmosphere? Well, there's a few ways that we can do that. Think of it like a river. Because the atmosphere is a fluid, we can think of it like liquid as well. So rotation is based on the location in our current, so the current of our river that we're imagining right now. And the direction of the flow changes, that also creates spin. So if a stick is flowing down the river, as that river uh, curves, the stick will start to rotate. So we can think about that with our jet stream schematic from earlier. In these troughs, we're creating counterclockwise spin, and that's where our areas of low pressure form, whereas in these ridges, we're creating clockwise spin, and that's for high pressure, generally a lot calmer weather. So it's in these troughs where we get a lot more of that counterclockwise spin, more storminess, more vertical motion, and more precipitation. We can also create shear vorticity, or shear uh, create spin, where there's faster moving currents of air, faster moving waters in this river example down here compared to up here, and that creates spin in this fashion, counterclockwise spin, once again, that can create more of these storm systems and intensify them further. And all around the globe we have, because our Earth is rotating, it's called planetary vorticity. Um, there's a term called Coriolis. We won't get into that today, but basically because our Earth is rotating, that causes these winds to spin in the first place in this counterclockwise fashion to create storm systems and and the like, and this planetary spin is the strongest near the pole. So all of these different types of vorticity, all of these different types of spin formed uh, all of the storm systems around the world. And the stronger the vorticity is, generally that means our storm systems are stronger. So let's tie this back together to the storm system we had last weekend. That uh, formed as an atmospheric river across the west coast, brought a lot of precipitation to California and the Pacific Northwest. Then that area of low pressure, our storm system tracked right into the uh, North Dakota area over the weekend, creating a lot of wind as the storm system really intensified over the Dakotas, bringing our blizzard conditions that we saw last weekend. So meteorologists can look at weather models in terms of predicting vorticity, predicting spin in the atmosphere, and that's where we can really identify where storm systems are and where they're going to intensify, also comparing these to the jet stream. So here's a plot, here's North Dakota right here, here's a maximum in vorticity, a maximum in spin in the atmosphere, just off the Pacific coast in the uh, northwestern part of the United States, 
on Thursday afternoon of last week. And this is a plot about 18,000 feet above our heads. So watch as that area of enhanced vorticity or enhanced spin in the atmosphere comes ashore to the Pacific Northwest, moves across the Rocky Mountains. That upper level energy, because still we're looking at about 18,000 feet above our heads, stays intact as it moves over to North Dakota. The surface area of low pressure forms once again and that intensifies over North Dakota, creating those very strong winds that we saw. But still, you can see where that vorticity is maximized right overhead. That's our storm system. That's all that spin in the atmosphere creating for the vertical motion, why we saw a lot of precipitation, a lot of snowfall with the storm, as well as a lot of winds, because stronger winds a few thousand feet up in the atmosphere were able to come down to the surface. And then that vorticity maximum, that spin maximized in the atmosphere, moved away from our area, and that's when our storm system moved out of the region. So summarizing it right here, again, we have those ridges in the jet stream where we have generally calmer weather with a lot lower spin, not much vorticity because of the position in the jet stream's curvature. Whereas where the jet stream really dips down those troughs, that's where our spin is maximized, vorticity is maximized, and that's where we generally see our storm systems form and really intensify as they come out of these troughs or dips in the jet stream. Back to you, Jody and Kevin. So today we kind of have a little bit of PVA, tomorrow it's NVA. Positive vorticity advection, tomorrow negative vorticity advection, meaning it's going to calm down a little bit. Okay. That, that's the, the, the Cliff Notes version, right? Like it's going to calm yeah. down a little bit. I need you to explain and dumb <laughs> it down for me. That is I'll, a great segment, though. Always I mean, good that's stuff. the essence of meteorology right there. there Love you go. these Morse codes. Yes, I know. You're all yeah. smile ear to ear. 